All right, Stephen, we are live. Welcome in. Latest episode of That SEC Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Braddon. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And that is not Cousin Shane. Do not adjust your sets. That is Stephen Lassen, Senior Editor over, over at Athlon Sports. He goes by Athlon Stephen on Twitter. What's up, Stephen? I can safely say that Cousin Shane is probably uh, much more liked than I am. Uh, everybody wants to be Cousin <laughs> Shane, right? Uh, but uh, hey, it's always good to talk to you as SEC After Dark Edition, uh, I guess. Also, I should tell you that, you know, I know it is winter, but I just saw that Hawaii starts spring practice on January 29th. Oh, baby, so, <laughs> right around the corner. Right <laughs> so the off season never ends. <laughs> Why do they start so early out there? Man, you got me on that one. I mean, think about it. Hawaii weather's not a concern, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm not, I'll never complain about uh, college football, Stephen. That is for sure. Do we have any? Uh, uh, <laughs> we don't have any future Hawaii trips for the SEC. I know we had we had the the back and forth with Vanderbilt, but uh, I can't think of any any Hawaii trips from the SEC upcoming. Can you? Not this year, unfortunately. Uh, it looks like they will not have an SEC team on the schedule. They do have a pretty <laughs> good quarterback, though. If you're maybe if your team uh, needs a quarterback in the spring portal, <laughs> Braden Shager wants to hit the portal one more time. Yeah, well, it's funny you should mention that, Stephen. I'm going to ask you about it in, in just a moment here because Michigan's J uh, Jim Harbaugh off to the NFL as expected to be the new head coach of the Los Angeles Chargers. Again, we'll get to that in just a minute. But uh, topic. Uh, Stephen and I are going to do for the upcoming SEC season. I have projected win totals for each and every SEC team. We got 16 now, not 14, 16 SEC teams. Stephen has no idea what number I've come up with. So I'm going to throw him my projected win total for each and every team. We'll go by team by team. And Stephen will tell me whether he's more confident that they'll go over or under the projected win total I have. And uh, so, you know, this could be a fun little show here, Stephen. But again, before we get to that, thoughts on Jim Harbaugh going to the NFL? And, uh, you know, what, what if anything, and this is all new because this happened about 20 minutes ago, but, uh, you know, do you anticipate a, a mass exodus or uh, who do you think would re replace Jim Harbaugh? What's, what's your thoughts on all that? I would be surprised if Michigan goes outside of the staff. I think Sharon Moore, the offensive coordinator, is going to be the next Michigan head coach. Um, and I think it'll come together pretty fast um, for, for a couple of reasons. I think, number one, he was 4-0 this year as the interim coach. I think behind the scenes, he's done a lot of great things there, uh, working with Jim Harbaugh the last couple of years. And also, I think it's continuity is great. Like we talked about, we've seen what happened in Alabama with the transfer portal and players leaving. If you promote from within, good chance those guys stick around with the culture and foundation that they built. So, um, you know, I think the big picture here is three of the coaches that coached in the college football playoff last season are now <laughs> gone. Uh, different jobs, retired in the NFL. So it's a big loss for Michigan, no doubt about it. But I suspect like in terms of the uh, fall effect for the SEC, I don't know that we're going to see the big domino effect that we saw when Nick Saban stepped down. I think it'll be much more contained uh, because they'll promote from within. That probably limits the roster attrition like we didn't see, we saw at Alabama. Right. And one thing I've seen, Steve, and I, and I have no clue. Thankfully, I'm long since my college days, but uh, apparently the 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 academic calendar has also kind of come and, and gone to, to my understanding and, I, and i'm sure it's not uniform across all the entire country but i think it i think that would also make it more difficult to get players let's say not that this is happening but players transferring from michigan to, to georgia right now you know the, the the deadline has has since passed for georgia as just an example i know that was a something fans were wondering about caleb downs but a lot of comments here steven Brian Kelly to Michigan. I, I know that was a popular rumor, so we're, we're not thinking that, are we? I would be surprised. Um, his It certainly has been out there, and it's certainly, I think some, certainly some people in Louisiana media were throwing that out there around bowl season. So it's, I guess there probably seems like there's a little bit of smoke to it, but I still think that at the end of the day, Michigan is going to promote from within. If this happened maybe earlier in the off season, maybe you'd see a little bit more of a wide open coaching search and if Michigan didn't go four and zero in those games where Sharon Moore was the interim coach, including he beat Ohio State, like that's pretty important for Michigan. So, right. 
I would say it, there's it's a little bit of smoke we should watch, but I would be really surprised if Brian Kelly is the next head coach at Michigan. Right, and, and particularly when you consider the moves he's made this offseason yes. to, to, to stack up his coaching staff in LSU. But, you know, if I'm not an LSU fan, Stephen, I am here for the content if Brian Kelly right. were to leave right. because that would give us – uh, at LSU coaching search and, and more portal madness on and on. So for LSU's sake, I hope he stays. For the rest of us, for for good fun content, uh, I, I I root for him to go. But uh, it, I, L, LSU's a better job than Michigan. So I personally, oh yeah. if I was a head coach, I would rather be at LSU than Michigan. Yep, they're already saying tradition unlike any under. Where is Cousin Shane? Cousin Shane, <laughs> he's got the night off. This is the off season. Shane's in. Uh, he, he is in, he's he's in trying to get into shape right now for hey, the season. He's interviewing for the Michigan job. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's not here. <laughs> All right, Stephen. So SEC over unders, and again, just just to clarify, because uh, maybe I should have said this as well. But when we when we project ahead to over unders, this is just regular season. So we're not talking bowl games, playoff games. Not even an SEC championship game would not factor in. It, it never factors in when you see these officially posted over under win totals for any team in the country. It's just regular season win totals. And uh, let's let's just go in alphabetical order here, Stephen. I'm going to throw up Alabama's schedule for 2024 here so people can see it real quick. Uh, Western Kentucky at home to open the season. S South Florida. At home, second game. A uh, week three at Wisconsin. Week four, it's actually week five, but it's their fourth game. They get a bye week. Georgia comes to Tuscaloosa. Good luck with that, uh, <laughs> Alabama. Vanderbilt on the road, but really we know that'll be a home game for, for those Alabama fans coming up to Nashville. Uh, South Carolina at home at Tennessee. That's going to be a tricky one. Then they come back home for Missouri. Missouri's going to be very good next year. LSU on the road, always a tough game. They'll have a bye week for to prepare for it as well. Mercer at home, at Oklahoma, and, of course, the Iron Bowl, Auburn at home uh, for the, the Crimson Tide here. So, Stephen, my projected over-under win total for Alabama – and I may have cheated a little, Stephen. I tried to make these uh, – I, I tried to keep them as accurate as possible, but I also put them to where I, I thought it would force you to make a difficult decision one way or another. So I've cheated a little bit here. We, we don't know the full roster defections yet, but I'm putting Alabama's projected 2024 win total right now, nine wins. Are you more confident – that the Crimson Tide under Dayboer and his debut go over, so 10 or, 10 or better, or under, 8-4 and four or worse. Where, where would you lean on that? So when I was doing my over-under projections, I had them at 9 or 10. So I'm going to go with over. I, first Ooh. of all, I think I would be careful about writing Alabama off too early here because that spring portal window, it would not surprise me if they are able to reel in some talent to reload the roster, they've already started to, to do that. They brought in the couple players from Washington starting uh, offensive linemen and one of the receivers. So I think Kalen DeBoer with his track record of quick turnarounds, we saw this at Washington, not a turnaround effort at Alabama, but a reloading effort. So I'm going to go over. I, I have confidence that Kalen DeBoer uh, will be very successful in year one. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Stephen. That's why we love having you on, because you don't overreact like I do or go too crazy like and have a couple beers like Shane does live <laughs> on the show. You're more measured. You're, I, I like the approach. But uh, let's look at the – I'm going to throw up his schedule one more time, Stephen. So, obviously, George at home, that's that's looking like the most difficult game on the schedule, even though it is in Tuscaloosa. It's early in the season. But I would tend to agree with you. I think they're going to set this number around nine – maybe even nine and a half and, and, and try to get people to put the money under while Alabama with, I think DeBoer is an elite coach. I think he's still going to have a top 10 roster better than pretty much everybody they face aside from Georgia. Uh, so moving aside from Georgia, Stephen, because we, we've already, I think we could both agree that's the toughest game on the schedule. 
what would be the next toughest that uh, that that Alabama may have to win to to hit this over? Man, you know I, the first thing that comes to my mind, and I hate to to kind of double stack here, but it's the road games like at Tennessee and at LSU. You know, welcome to the SEC, by the way, for Kalen DeBoer. Your first game is against Georgia, and then you get road trips to uh, Tennessee and LSU, and you have to go to Oklahoma. So um, the road schedule is really challenging. But if I had to go uh, with the next one, it would be Tennessee or LSU. I think if you're Alabama, catching Tennessee where you do in the schedule could be kind of good because at that point of season, Tennessee, Nico probably still trying to get acclimated. Um, LSU later in the season, I would assume defensively, they're going to be a lot better too. So those are both tricky uh, for Alabama. Yeah. And I'm just looking at these comments, Stephen. I mean, my, I, I love it. I mean, these, the anti-Alabama, I mean, Jerry says Bama's going six and six. I mean, that's crazy, but these anti-Alabama fans are dancing on the grave. M meanwhile, the Alabama fans are, are saying 10 wins minimum, you know, it, it, we're, we're going to keep this thing rolling. And just the fact, Stephen, that I, I think in these people in their, in their hearts of hearts, the, the people dancing on the grave and the people saying they're going to win the national championship. I don't think they have any confidence in either one of those, Stephen, because we just don't know. We don't know what Kalen DeBoer is going to be with this Alabama team right out the gate. And that's what makes college football fun, in my opinion, is just you just never quite know what you're going to get. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not to mention you have a head coach that has been successful at a couple different stops now, and whether it's been an offensive coordinator or he's been a head coach, um, he's also his track record of working with quarterbacks is outstanding. And you have a quarterback in Jalen Milrow who showed strides during the season, but still has a ways to go, I think. And I, and I think that'll be something that I'm watching too, is the staff that they hired, Ryan Grubb is offensive coordinator. Scott Huff is their offensive line coach, is a massive upgrade over Eric Warford. Also, their receivers coach, Jamarcus Shepard, I think is a way better receivers coach than Holman Wiggins is. So I love their offensive staff. And the fact they went out and got two sitting head coaches to be assistants uh, for their defense is a big-time deal. So they're, I think Alabama, it's kind of weird. We, we think in the past they would always be just a national championship like front runner. They probably still are. But they're also in this weird space where they are probably more of a wild card just because we have no idea um, how this is all going to mesh together. Kind of uncharted territory for a team that usually I just pencil in at number one or number two every year. Right. All right, uh, Stephen, let's get to uh, Arkansas here. So I'm going to run down the schedule again real quick. Arkansas Pine Bluff right out the gate at home at Oklahoma State. Tricky game week two of the season. Oklahoma State. Of course, you never know what you're going to get from the the lose to South Alabama. That they still win ten games. I don't, I don't know what Gundy's on down there. Uh, UAB at home. Uh, Trent Wilf, uh, Trent Dilfer, right? He said, yeah, Joe, so a wild card there. Auburn on the road. Texas A&M. Of course, that game's in Arlington annually. I believe this is the final year of that as well. Uh, Tennessee at home. LSU at home. Oh. Goodness, it's picking up here for the Razorbacks. <laughs> Mississippi State on the road. Uh, Ole Miss at home. Texas at home. Louisiana Tech at home. And wrapping up on the road at Missouri. Not an easy slate for the Razorbacks. It never is, Stephen. And, and this is uh, – we got to get uh, some momentum going here, if I'm saying Pittman, to keep my job. I got the over-under projected, Stephen. Five for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Are you more confident that Arkansas goes over or under five wins? I'm going to be a little negative here. I'm probably going under right now. Mm -hmm. um, I had it at four and a half in my projection. So I see three wins right out of the gate, like the non-conference schedule, um, Arkansas Pine Bluff, UAB, and Louisiana Tech. I think the question is where in SEC play do you find some wins? Um, I think Miss at Mississippi State certainly is a toss up. I think the other problem is, and it, it, it's hard to know at this point, like how some of these teams are going to look by September or October. But if you're Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, LSU, Ole Miss are all top 15 teams and they're all coming to Fayetteville. Like your schedule's not balanced out with some of your swing games. You know, you'd like to maybe get a South Carolina at home or something to maybe balance this out. So, it, it, and, and at Oklahoma State, too, uh, probably going to be picked as one of the Big 12 uh, front runners this year. So I think this is I mean, this is a very brutal schedule for a coach that is squarely on the hot seat next year. And a lot of to me, I think about Arkansas 
for this season is going to be what do they get out of the quarterback position? Like if you start thinking about the bottom of the league, whether that's you know whoever you like, Mississippi State, South Carolina, Arkansas, all these teams have new quarterbacks stepping in. So if Taylor Green, Jacoby Criswell, offensive line for Arkansas, I have a ton of confidence in, in Bobby Petrino to, to figure this out. But there are a lot of questions in a very difficult schedule uh, for a team that really needs, like you said, to build some uh, positive momentum here. Right, and and I've gotten in trouble before, Stephen. Uh, big Arkansas homer over here, but I have called out their home field advantage at times. Now, maybe that's not fair because they, at time, you know, certainly previous coaches who shall not be named on this show again, Stephen. Uh, you know, they they put them behind the eight ball with some of the 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 lack of coaching, I guess you could say. Not only that, the SEC for whatever reason they they basically refuse to give Arkansas many night games. They give them a lot of noon games, which is 11 central time games. Uh, so so maybe some of that's not fair. But then you turn around and you look at like losing a BYU at home last year. That was a one we really needed to win. So I'm not saying they can't win at home. We, we saw it just a couple years ago when, when Texas came in there. It, they were not ready. Texas was not ready for a night game at Arkansas. So I'm not completely saying it's, it's an awful home field or anything like that. But... Are you, would you agree with me that, um, like you said, I mean, some of these home games, Stephen, Tennessee, LSU, Ole Miss, Texas, I mean, these are difficult, difficult games. And just because they're at home, it, it will be, you know, you'd, you'd much rather play them at home, obviously, than on the road. But just because you're getting them at home doesn't mean it's going to be some some environment that these teams are not capable of coming in and, and winning. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think first of all, you know, I, when I did these projections, like I said, I had Arkansas in the four or five win range. I think if you give them a win against Mississippi state, and of course we just saw uh, last year, Mississippi state beat Arkansas different teams this year. But if you give them a win there, I think the question is, can they pick off one of these teams in Fayetteville? And I think they probably could. So, you know, I, I could see a path to five and seven. I think six and six at this point is kind of stretching it. But I, you know, later in the season, if you're Arkansas, if you can get things figured out offensively, when you get Ole Miss, you get Texas uh, coming to your place late in the season. There are some opportunities there uh, to pull off an upset, albeit this is a very, very difficult schedule uh, for a coach. Like I said, that is on the hot seat next year. Right. Well, this guy's not on the hot seat. Not yet, Stephen, but who knows? Auburn here uh, coming off a, a rough end to 2023, the debut of the Hugh Freeze era down there on the Plains. We've got uh, five straight home games to, to open a season. Alabama A&M is our opener. Cal's coming to Auburn to, to after Auburn went at Cal last year. New Mexico at home, Arkansas at home, and then Oklahoma at home. Man, it's I love seeing Oklahoma and Texas on these schedules. But then again, it ramps up in a hurry, Stephen. At Georgia, at Missouri, at Kentucky, Vanderbilt at home, ULM at home, Texas A&M at home, and at Alabama. So, uh, you know, an, uh, a manageable, to some extent, uh, a, lot of, a lot of manageable stretches in this uh, schedule for the Auburn Tigers, Stephen. I, I got them, the Auburn Tigers, over, under, seven wins are you more confident they go over or under seven wins i am going to go maybe a little bit of a surprise i'm going to go over so the first thing that jumped out to me when i looked at their schedule i see six wins right off the bat you look at their first four or first five games are at home they'll be favored in the first four you also look later in the season i think they'll be favored over vanderbilt and ul monroe although We've seen teams uh, that they should be beating come into the stadium uh, in Auburn late in November and not work out. And it's talking about New Mexico State uh, last year, but they should beat Mon uh, UL Monroe. So I see six there, and I think maybe they can pick off an upset or two. Maybe that's Texas A&M, Kentucky, uh, maybe as well. So I'm going to go right now. If you gave me a line of seven and a half, I would take the over and think Auburn can maybe find a way to get to eight. I think the quarterback position is obviously this team's biggest concern uh, for next year. Right. And if you're an Auburn fan, you got to have confidence, Stephen, that uh, Pew Freeze will be calling the plays now. And we're kind of all on the same page on, on that side of the football, which, which clearly we were not at times last season. There was, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, we, we don't have to rehash it 
all of it, but I mean, just awful on offense. If we, if we can be just be capable on offense, as long as the defense doesn't fall apart, you might be right. I mean, seven, eight, who knows? Maybe maybe even nine if if they if they pull up a couple upsets. So, but I, I think there's given that that early stretch, Steve. We get we have to see Auburn come out hot because if they drop to Cal or Arkansas or something like that, oh buddy. I think it's going to be a rough, rough year if they don't come out the gate and show much improvement. They should be able to go 4-0 and in those games. Uh, New Mexico, I think, will be picked close to the bottom of the Mountain West. California, probably a fringe bowl team. They're an ACC team now, uh, no longer in the Pac-12. And, of course, these two teams played last year. Also kind of interesting that uh, Sam Jackson, the quarterback for Cal, is now going to be a receiver uh, for Auburn, he came to Auburn via the transfer portal. But to your point, I think there's an opportunity there to start fast. Um, the first five games are at home, Oklahoma. I think if Auburn can win that game, all of a sudden you're five and zero going into the game against Georgia. Then that stretch in um, October where you go at Missouri, at Kentucky. So if you can build some early momentum here, you know we'll see what, where Missouri ends up. Kentucky, I think. You know, I think some preseason questions, some of these games that are toss ups could look a little more favorable by October. But for me, it all comes back to quarterback play and getting the quarterback and the receivers on the same page after what we saw uh, last season. Uh, that's really my biggest concern for Auburn still at this point. Mm -hmm. All right. How about uh, Florida, Stephen? <laughs> I mean, maybe the toughest schedule in the country here. Miami right out the gate. It, it is in the swamp, though. So that's good. First three are at home. Sanford at home, not Stanford, Sanford. So <laughs> that should be a win. Texas A&M at home. Then we go on the road at Mississippi State. Uh, UCF at home, at Tennessee, Kentucky at home, Georgia, of course, annually played in Jacksonville. Texas on the road, LSU at home, Ole Miss at home, and Florida State on the road. I've got the projected over under win total for the Florida Gators at six. You more confident that the Gators go over or under six wins next season? I'm going to give you a bad answer. I'm going to take push because I think they get to six and six. Um, this is a very, very difficult schedule. There is no doubt about it. Um, I've got them having six games against teams I have in the preseason top 25 and two against fringe top 25 teams in A&M in Miami. And this is no doubt about it. This is one of the toughest schedules in the country. 11 power five opponents, uh, power five opponents as well. So, um, you know, I think we talk about early season momentum with Auburn, Florida getting Miami and Texas A&M and Mississippi State like early in the season. Those are three kind of, I would say, swing toss up games going on the road to Starkville is not going to be easy. But if you can start four and oh, there's an opportunity there to build some momentum if you're Billy Napier and sort of, um, reverse some of the you know kind of hot seat talk what's this team going to look like later in the season i think if you're florida you've got to be optimistic that still the offense can continue to get better um billy napier's done a great job and you know the injuries a quarterback to graham mertz they kept things going um late in the season so i i think big question for me for florida still remains defense but i'll take six and six right now as early projection right and, and to your point, Stephen, that Mississippi State game on the road, first road game, new new uh, coach, obviously for the for the Bulldogs. You know, if they were to flip that, say Tennessee was your first SEC road game. I mean, I think I think that's a much more challenging path for the Florida Gators. I I, I don't think. While yes, I mean the final five, six, maybe even seven games is just. It's incredibly brutal i I, th I think it's oversold a little bit how difficult this is right out the gate but i would i would say this Stephen. i i anticipate florida will be a favorite over miami in the opener because it's at home you know i, th I think this is close to a toss-up but i think florida will be favored if they lose to miami Stephen, with all the pressure and, and crystal ball's got pressure on him too so they they need a win if florida loses to miami is there any chance they get that they hit six? I think there's still a chance. 
Um, I think they could get better during the season. You know, kind of like you and I have talked this year, they played a lot of underclassmen, especially on defense. And I think the addition of Ron Roberts is a big deal. Um, you could combine him with Austin Armstrong. I would expect that side of the ball to be better this season. So, yeah, I think there's still a chance. But I think very broadly here, like three of their toss-up games are in the month of September. So I mm-hmm. think given all that, you know, what all the kind of going on with Billy Napier kind of sitting on the hot seat, You've got some toss-up games early in the season. I think it's important to make up some momentum early in the year because, like you said, that November stretch, man, I mean, Georgia, Texas, LSU, Ole Miss, and Florida State could all be playoff teams next year. So it's important. It's going to be important to make up some ground early, I think, um, for the, for Florida. Yep. All right, how about uh, the Georgia Bulldogs, Stephen? Uh, right out the gate, it fun game here in Atlanta. Clemson, neutral. Technically, it'll be more Bulldogs than anything, I have to imagine. Uh, Tennessee Tech at home, on the road at Kentucky, at Alabama. They'll have two weeks to prepare for that Alabama trip. Auburn at home, Mississippi State at home, at Texas. My word, I can't believe these are conference games, Stephen. Two weeks to prepare for Florida, again, always in Jacksonville. Uh, Ole Miss on the road, Tennessee at home, UMass at home georgia tech at home much more difficult schedule than the bulldogs had last season when they went undefeated during the regular season i'm setting the over under for georgia in a regular season with that schedule i think they're preseason number one i think they're gonna be the favorite to win it all again but the over under steven i'm i'm going 11 wins you're more confident that georgia goes over which would be undefeated or under somehow lose two games which they could still lose two games and win the national championship in this new format, but uh, we may be firing Kirby if they lose too. You know, I'm just kidding. But what, what's your thoughts? Over over under eleven. I like Georgia at eleven. I think it is very difficult in college football to go undefeated. I know Georgia has lost. I think what one game in two out of the last three regular seasons and or last three years, and they went undefeated in their one. So, if any team could do it, it would be Georgia to run the table. I always bet on teams usually losing once during the regular season because it is hard to go undefeated. So I think that's just kind of because they have to go to Texas um, because they, you know, they also play um, at Alabama. There are some opportunities there for them to lose a game, but I think this is the team to beat. This is to me, the number one team in the preseason. And like you said, they could lose once they could lose twice and they could still win the national title. So I like Georgia at 11 and one. Jared says at UMass, that's a trap game. Watch out <laughs> for that UMass. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, I would be. Well, let me ask it to you this then, Stephen. Would you be more surprised if Georgia went twelve and zero or ten and two, given the the schedule? What what would surprise you more? Ten and two. I, I think they could easily run the table. I would mm-hmm. be shocked if they lose. Uh, two games Um, the Clemson game in the season opener in Atlanta is interesting Um, I will also tell you that I'm not convinced this game will be all that close (laughs) given Clemson's offensive issues and knowing uh, the lack of portal help that Dabo has recruited over there so I think yeah I I would probably be stunned if Georgia lose two games next year okay all right how about uh, next up Stephen Kentucky Uh, we got another uh, a lot of good home games right out the slate here, so so we can get some momentum for Kentucky. Southern Miss to open the season at home. South Carolina at home. It's always interesting to see an SEC game so so early in the in this uh, schedule, particularly one that is. It seems like whoever wins is Kentucky, South Carolina. I mean, it it kind of determines the fate of the winner. It seems like more often than not, a little rivalry too. After the last couple of years between <laughs> these two coaches, <laughs> the sunglass bowl yeah. here, uh, Georgia. That's pretty unique to see them so early on the schedule. It is in Lexington, though. Ohio is at home. Uh, then on the road at Ole Miss, a nice little rivalry there, Bruin. It seems like Kentucky and Ole Miss are playing almost annually now. Uh, they get a bye week. They get Vanderbilt at home. At Florida, which they have owned here lately, the Kentucky Wildcats have. Auburn at home. At Tennessee. Murray State at home. Texas on the road. And then Louisville at home to wrap us up. I got the projected over-under win total for Kentucky, Stephen, at seven. 
Are you going over or under? That's where I have Kentucky. I have them at seven. I think one thing I like about their schedule is you mentioned it like South Carolina, Louisville, Auburn swing games are in Lexington. So there's an opportunity with four home games, albeit one of them is against Georgia to start the season. You could easily be three and one going into that road trip at Ole Miss early in the season. So I think for a team that is going to be replacing and you know breaking in a new quarterback, uh, they've got some question marks, I think, on defense this year, too. So I think for a team with those questions, get a chance to start three and one headed into SEC play. And you also get Vanderbilt and Auburn uh, before the month of November in Lexington. There's an opportunity there by the midpoint of the season uh, for Kentucky to be very close, I think, to that seven kind of win barometer. So I'm going Kentucky seven and five here. Now, I know this isn't fair, Stephen, but let's let's just play a little game here and say that Brock Vandegriff. Again, it, it's probably uh, it's probably unfair to him to say, I was going to say the next Will Levis, because Will Levis, any NFL starting quarterback, so let's not throw all that on him, but let's say he he's as good as Will Levis was in in his in Will Levis's first season at Kentucky. If they can get that, and and we know that for a fact that Brock Vandegrift's going to be that caliber, so you know, uh, middle to upper echelon SEC quarterback. If, if I were to tell you that, Stephen, and you knew that, would you update that to to maybe eight and four or or maybe even nine and three? Yeah, I would. Um, you know, looking at their schedule, Georgia at Texas, mm-hmm. maybe at Tennessee would be the only games then they would be an underdog in. Um, so that puts them closer to nine and three. So I think, yeah, I think eight and four or nine and three, if, if they get that kind of caliber of play, mm-hmm. then yeah, that's where I would, I'd slot them in there. Okay. I'm just curious because hopes, hopes always often are, are on the quarterback. And when we don't yeah. know, it's, it's very hard to project some of these teams. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially, I mean, especially a team like Kentucky, where would you look at what they bring back next season with some of those guys in the offensive line coming back for an extra year, uh, chip Tranium, the running back they brought in from Ohio state is a very physical runner. I think he'll fit in well with that Kentucky offense. And I think I trust Liam Cohen provided he is the offensive coordinator at, <laughs> at Kentucky next year to figure something out and develop a quarterback. And, and plus two, I love the receivers like Dane key and Barry and Brown are awesome. So uh, there's a lot to like, I think if they can get the quarterback uh, situation figured out, I'm just laughing, Steve, because it just occurred to me that maybe Jim Harbaugh will say, let's get Liam Cohen. Cause it seems like every other opening they're they're, they're gauging the interest of Liam Cohen. I, I have no idea if that's, you know, something he's desires or not, but just kind of funny to me, but yeah, uh, all right, how about uh, LSU, Stephen? Next on the docket here, we've got a uh, very interesting slate here. Las Vegas is the in Las Vegas is the opener against Southern Cal. Brian Kelly, brother, we cannot go zero for three in these primetime season openers. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen to you if you do that. Nickel State at home to to open the home slate here, week two uh, at South Carolina. Very tricky road game here for LSU. If if you lose to Southern Cal, South Carolina is must-win territory. Otherwise, we're looking at a rough, rough season potentially. UCLA at home, I, I mean, I was going to say they're, gonna, they're playing half the Pac-12, but these are not even Pac-12 teams anymore. They're Big Ten for some reason. I hate it. Uh, South Alabama at home. Uh, they, it looks like they got a bye week, and then they get Ole Miss at home. That that's a heck of a series. Lane Kiffin cannot stop tweeting about LSU for some reason. So there's there's bad blood there. At Arkansas, tricky game. At A and M, got a week to uh, two weeks to prepare for Alabama at home. This is now, and you want to talk pressure, Stephen? Year three, Brian Kelly. Year one, Kayla DeBoer. We have got to flip this thing. We don't got to win every one like Nick Saban did, but we got to win our fair share. We basically got to win every home game, I think, if you're Brian Kelly, to, to appease the fans, with, particularly with a first-year coach here at Alabama. At Florida, Vanderbilt at home, and then Oklahoma at home to round up the schedule. So fascinating schedule for the for the LSU Tigers, one of the toughest, toughest ones. I got LSU projected uh, wins, Stephen. Nine, oh, over under nine wins. What say you? Give me the over. 
Ooh. I'm buying this LSU team next year. Um, I think, first of all, their defense could not be as bad as it was this year. <laughs> it just cannot be, right? I mean, they've added, they've had upgraded their defensive staff so much. Uh, Blake Baker, Bo Davis, like those Blake Baker was one of the top defensive coordinators. Bo Davis is one of the top defensive line coaches. They're bound to be better. I know they've got questions in the secondary and up front, um, but I think they'll be better. Also, I, I think Nussmeyer, while they may not average, you know, whatever it was 46 points a game, they're still going to be good on offense. And I think they added CJ Daniels, the transfer from Liberty, who will help right away at receiver. The other thing I like is Ole Miss comes to, uh, to, to Tiger Stadium. They also get Alabama and Oklahoma all at home. So three of their tougher games are, are at home this year. So um, you also talk about opportunity if you're Brian Kelly. You know, Oklahoma comes into the league. You also have um, Alabama with the new coach and Ole Miss trending up. So there's some opportunity here for Brian Kelly after kind of what was a semi uh, disappointing, I think, 2023 after winning the SEC West to maybe get back on track and maybe make some noise next year. And so uh, let me ask you this, Steven, since you're so high on them and um, and and I won't hold this to you. I mean, heck, we're recording this on January 24th or anything. Not, not that you've made your playoff picks or anything, but uh, w- w- would you are you leaning towards LSU being a playoff? team this year or because i i gotta be honest with you i'm, I'm kind of leaning that they're not i'm just kind of curious where, where you're at i have them just outside in my first projection they're basically like the first or second team out mm-hmm. um, one of the reasons why they're not in there is i have like five other teams in the sec in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's the space was a little limited but yeah i've got them i think they're certainly a playoff contender uh this year so maybe by ask me in the august they might be in there Okay. Uh, now another one that that's got certainly got playoff aspirations. Uh Oh, Oh wait, I skipped one. Oh my God. I can't believe I did this. Steven. I'm not used to Oklahoma being in here, but let's go over their schedule here. <laughs> Oklahoma suitors here. Temple, right, right again. A lot of these sec teams got a lot of home games right out the, do- the docket here. Temple, Houston, Tulane and Tennessee. A lot of T's up there for the Oklahoma Sooners right out the gate. Good opportunity to to get some serious momentum. Auburn on the road. Got, uh, looks like two weeks to prepare for for Texas and Dallas, of course. South Carolina at home. At Ole Miss. Maine. What? You are SEC. You got Maine on your schedule, Oklahoma. Well done. Uh, At Missouri. Alabama at home. And then LSU on the road. I'm going to go, Stephen, projected over under win total for the Oklahoma Sooners, first season in the SEC. I'm going to go eight. Would you go over or under for the Oklahoma Sooners? I've got them at eight. Um, I, first of all, I should say, I think we need to talk to Oklahoma's uh, scheduling department. They're not quite SEC ready yet because Maine should be scheduled for November 23rd. Not, uh, <laughs> not <more. laughs> so we got some work to do, Oklahoma, but uh, just kidding. Um, in all seriousness, like the September 21st game with Josh Heupel coming back to Norman is going to be fascinating. Uh, just a, an interesting storyline. I think, though, when I look at Oklahoma, where they are, I love the fact that Brent Venables has been building this team up at the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line is a question mark for next season, but I think defensively they make strides. And I also really like Jackson Arnold. I think he's going to be um, a big-time quarterback for them. So um, the schedule is not easy because they get Tennessee, they get Texas, Ole Miss, Missouri, Alabama, and LSU. So if you ask me to play a side, I would probably say they're probably, if I had to bet, probably seven because just simply because I think the schedule is really difficult and transitioning to the league will be challenging. But my early W's and L's put them at eight and four. Mm-hmm. And then Aaron, I appreciate you. He gave us 10 bucks donation here. Have we talked to Arkansas? Love the show. We did. Uh, and <laughs> Steven, not me. Steven says under. I, I said five projected wins. He went under. We, we got to go under somewhere. But, uh, Hey, here's the thing, Stephen. It seems like Arkansas, when you, at least when I do, when I pump them up and build them up into something they're not, they they don't live up to the expectations. When you count them out, that's when they get you. So, uh, from that standpoint, if I'm an Arkansas fan, the fact that I'm that I'm not high on you, (laughs) you you ought to be giving me more money than ten bucks. You know what? Well, you know, I think maybe there's an opportunity here for Arkansas, though. 
you know, if you think about it, like they're they're going to enter this season with basically no expectations at all after last year. So there's an opportunity here to I don't want to say sneak up on people, but they have a chance to surprise. And also their early season schedule. I mean, the Oklahoma State game could be huge because Oklahoma State's probably, like I mentioned, going to be the Big 12 front runner, maybe the favorite. If they could go into Stillwater, get a win, go to Auburn and get a win, and all of a sudden you're you're sitting there, hey, we could be 4-0 going to uh, Arlington to play Texas A&M in a series that who the heck knows like what's going to happen to that because of what's going on there. <laughs> and A&M has a lot of transition too. So I do think there are some reasons to be optimistic if you're Arkansas. And I think you have to trust the fact that, you know, last year they hired Travis Williams. The defense, did, I think, took a step forward. I think Petrino, I think, will make the offense better. So I don't think it's all doom and gloom here uh, for Arkansas. I, I think that maybe the, the situation is, they could be a really pesky like team fighting for bowl eligibility this year. Um, uh, maybe not the the blowouts that we saw kind of at the end of the year in SEC play this year with the, the Auburn game. Yep. And uh, Jared, appreciate your five bucks koozie money. Uh, let me know if you if you haven't got your koozie, Jared. I mean, I, I sent out so many. We sent out so many. If anybody out there, you want a koozie, Subscribe to the show. Give us a five-star rating on Apple or Spotify, however you get your podcast. Subscribe to the show on YouTube. Hit us up at thatsecpodcast at gmail.com. I just ordered new Florida koozies and new Mizzou koozies because we ran out of those. So I uh, do appreciate all the support from all you guys. All right, Stephen, moving on to uh, Ole Miss. Uh, again, I, I'm talking playoff aspirations here for Lane Kiffin and company. Let's run down their schedule here. Furman at home. Now that's an SEC game right there. Middle <laughs> Tennessee at home at Wake Forest. You, can, you couldn't get an easier non-conference than this. Well done, Ole Miss. Georgia Southern at home. So should be 4-0 right out the gate. Kentucky at home. This is setting up really, really nice for the Rebs. South Carolina on the road. Tricky, tricky game. It's LSU on the road. Uh, Oklahoma at home. Uh, at Arkansas, Georgia at home. You never want Georgia, but at, you want them at home <laughs> if you're going to get them. Uh, Florida on the road. And then, of course, the Egg Bowl, Mississippi State at home. I got the uh, projected over under, Stephen, for the Ole Miss Rebels at nine wins. Or, would you go over or under that? I'm taking over. Uh, give me a ticket on the lane train to the college <laughs> football playoff. Uh, as you were mentioning the schedule there, that November 23rd game against Florida has got like a uh, trap game written all over it. Right. I mean, you have to, uh, you do have an open week before that, but you get Mississippi state uh, the following week for the egg bowl. So not great timing on that one, but this is a very manageable schedule for a team that just won double digit games last year. They are all in for 2024 Jackson dark coming back is huge. Um, I love the defensive additions to the portal. I think they will be much better on defense. No Alabama, um, you know, no, no Texas, no Tennessee on the schedule. It's pretty favorable uh, for Ole Miss. So I, I think, give me, pencil me in for double digit wins again for Ole Miss. I like uh, this comment from Michael Palmer looking at the Ole Miss schedule. He says, so they trying to make the <laughs> FCS playoff, but uh, I, any concern, Stephen? And I don't know if this is real or not. I mean, it, it seems to bite some teams, not so much others, but this is college football and these are young athletes expectations for the first time that uh you know old mess will make will make the playoff compete for an sec title and that doesn't mean they they won't do any of those but we have not seen this team with the weight of expectation the, the only other time I, I think it's fair to say that these players have had the weight of expectations Stephen, was last season playing alabama giffen running his mouth you know uh most people thought that Ole Miss was going to win that game. And remember, I mean, well, he was – technically he was right, so maybe we should credit him. But Kiffin saying, well, this could be the last time we face Nick Saban, which it was. It was. It was. So credit him for that. But clearly what he was trying to do was, you know, basically say they're, they're over and done with. And then Alabama just put a whooping on them like they always do. So it's fair to, to question. This program has has failed to live up ex, to expectations in a sense. They, they still won 11 games, so – it's not completely fair to say they've failed to live up to expectations because that that is smashing overall expectations. But how, how will this 
any concerns, Stephen? I'm, I'm rambling here. Any uh, concern that this team, with with the weight of offseason expectations, fails to live up to it? Yes, um, because I don't I don't really have a ton of specific personnel things, and also their schedule is very favorable. So I think those two things, when you're bringing back the core of a team that you know won 11 games last year, and you have a favorable schedule this year. That seems to me it's very easy to pencil them in for double-digit wins like I'm doing again. So to me, I think, yeah, there is sort of the kind of weight of expectations. Um, you know, I'm, there's a you know, we've kind of seen some other teams. Like USC this year was kind of a trendy playoff pick. They fell short. Texas has fallen short uh, with expectations in the past. So yeah, A&M I think, certainly. A and M's a great one annually. <laughs> annually, yeah. <laughs> so yes, uh, I think the expectation is no longer that eight and four is good enough next year. It is college football playoff. It is double digit wins. Ole Miss has the personnel and the expectations are there. So yeah, I'll buy that. And we've all already started to see it, Stephen. And and I have no idea the inner workings or or why this is, but they're I mean they're landing guys in the portal. Which really, I mean, it's it, 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 what well, people don't, I think, fail to realize. These portal commitments, they mean nothing until they right. actually show up. But I mean, they, they're getting big time commitments, and then next week they're on to another school. So I, I don't understand what in the world's going on. But it, that, that gives you a clue that, that some of it is just so in flux. And, and again, it's not like they added these guys to the locker room and then they, and then the, these guys, took off because they hated Kiffin or they hated the the teammates or anything like that. But it's, it's already interesting, Stephen. And it's, you know, you know, it's, it's far, we're so far away from the season and there's already drama. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. You know, I think you bring up a good point because I, I think let's just say what happens if Ole Miss loses at South Carolina and loses at LSU early in the season. You know, all of a sudden your your expectation was we're supposed to be in the college football playoff. You know, Lane Kiffin has talked before about how difficult culture can be with one year transfers. You're basically bringing them in as like, hey, you're here to win games. We're, you know, there's no doubt about it. And so building that team camaraderie, team culture could be a little challenging in, in this case in that portal era. Kiffin's done a great job. Uh, so far of doing that. But like what, what would happen if they started slow? Like what would if they're sitting there with two losses at the middle? point of the season and they still have to go to um florida they still got to play mississippi state they still got to play georgia so you know i think kind of navigating early in the season and stacking some wins can help really kind of keep that you know team together expectation wise yep all right steven how about uh mississippi state first season of course for jeff levy here uh, we got um uh... Who, who is this? Uh, Eastern Kentucky? Eastern Kentucky. That, yeah, okay. I'm trying to look at this logo with this cowboy with a mustache. Looks kind of like me with a cowboy hat on here. Uh, that's our opener at home, thankfully. Uh, Arizona State on the road. Tricky, tricky. Arkansas and Mississippi State never schedule these Power 5 Week 2 away games. They're, that's setting you up for failure. Unless you win them, and then you get some momentum. Of course, we, we can swing it both ways, I guess. Toledo at home. Florida at home. Texas on the road. Good night. Good luck for that. Uh, you got two weeks to prepare for Georgia again on the road. Uh, Texas A&M at home, Arkansas at home, UMass at home. UMass got more SEC games than uh, any other team outside the <laughs> SEC, apparently. Tennessee on the road, Mizzou at home, and then the Egg Bowl on the road. Steven, I'm going for Mississippi State over under win total in Jeff Lebby's debut five wins what, what's your thoughts on that probably not going to make a lot of friends in starkville but i'm going to take four so i'm going to go under right now so i see three wins in the non-conference i think eastern kentucky toledo and umass i think those are ones you would guarantee for mississippi state at arizona state i think it's a swing game i think arizona state will be better this year also jane rashada uh, the starting quarterback at arizona state that's a pretty interesting uh sec storyline but you also look within the SEC, like where are the wins going to come from? I think Arkansas at, in Starkville is certainly one of them. Can they pick off another one? Uh, so I, I think it would not shock me to see their Vegas win total open up at about five and a half. But I'm having trouble kind of finding wins. This road schedule for Jeff Lebby in year one, I mean, going to Tennessee, Georgia, Ole Miss, and Texas, uh, the not a lot of favors on the SEC scheduling for Jeff Lebby this year. 
Yeah, certainly not. So uh, they're just tough to project until we see. We don't even know who the start quarterback is going to be or, you know, how, what this defense looks like. We we have a good idea what Jeff Levy wants to do on offense. Can he successfully pull it off year one with what he's inherited and what he's added via the portal? Again, we just don't know at this point in time. So it's very, very difficult to project Mississippi State, but another one that could surprise. All right, how about Missouri, Steve? This is just my goodness, Stephen, this is talk about favorable schedule here. Uh, again, four straight home games right out the gate here. Murray State at home, Buffalo at home, Boston College at home, Vanderbilt at home. I mean, I'd be stunned if they're not 4-0 right out the gate before things start to ramp up for the Tigers. At Texas A&M, there's UMass again. At, and this one is <laughs> at you, man. What in the world are we doing here, Missouri? You're in the SEC. You don't go to UMass. We, we got to fix that. Uh, Auburn at home, at Alabama. Of course, no Nick Saban, so maybe a slightly more manageable. Uh, Oklahoma at home. That's going to be a terrific game. Uh, at South Carolina, at Mississippi State, and Arkansas at home to round us out. So, Stephen, again, I'm not – Try, you know, I'm not trying to convince anybody that Missouri is going to be one of the best teams in the country, but it was not going to surprise me if they are. Because with that schedule, with what they got coming back, yes, they lost their defensive coordinator, but I don't think it's too much to to put their their over under at nine and a half. That's where I'm going with the Missouri Tigers, and I wouldn't be stunned if they go over that. What 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 do you think? I like them to hit the over. I, wow. I think this is a playoff caliber team. Now, I, I think if you want to be concerned about something for Missouri is sometimes when we see these teams that take a big step forward from one year to the next, is it something that they can replicate the next year? Eh, that's fair to wonder, I think, for Missouri. But the argument in favor of them continuing that momentum is the schedule is really favorable. Also, they have a one of the SEC's better quarterbacks coming back in Brady Cook. Luther Burden is back. Um, keeping Kirby Moore is a big deal as the offensive coordinator. Drinkowitz has done a great job in the portal on the recruiting trail of filling in some of those voids. Curious to see um, who they get as defensive coordinator. So I am pretty optimistic about this team. Uh, I think 10 and 2 seems about right in playoff contender uh, for the Missouri Tigers, I think. But, by the way, um, Missouri at UMass, uh, McGurk Stadium for UMass seats 17,000. It can expand to 21,000. So if you're a Missouri fan, uh, a lot of them could be going up there to Amherst for that game. So, <laughs> And, you know, I, I see a lot of parallels, and everybody's making it. And it's I think it's fair to do, Stephen, with this team at Ole Miss and, and them kind of, you know, making this this potential run to the playoffs for, for both, which would be ter terrific for the fans. But I don't – I don't see many other parallels between Ole Miss and Missouri. And, and I mean that as a compliment to Missouri because, you know, they're not necessarily flashy. You know, they're not all over social media. They're, they don't got the dog out there, you know, come to the sip, come pet our dog, whatever. It, they're more chip on the shoulder. Disres it's almost like they'd rather be disrespected. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, fe I feel like Eli is going to come out here and say, you know, y'all picked us six, so I don't. What What do I care if you pick us? You know, to win ten. You know, you, you guys know nothing. You know what I mean? So I I feel like that's that's more the comfort zone for Missouri, which is why I don't have the same concerns that I that I said I do with Ole Miss potentially with the hype. Where Missouri, if they get the hype, I I just I don't think that'll affect them as much. Is do you think that's fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. I think, first of all, I think um, they are bringing in a really solid class of transfers, not as many as Ole Miss, uh, to some extent, a little bit more maybe of a homegrown roster there um, for Missouri. But I, I think I go back to the schedule and just how favorable it is this year. So I, I think you combine, um, you know, coming into last year, we weren't really sure, like Eli Drinkwitz is kind of hovering around six wins. Like, can they take a step forward? Well, they did. So I think that slow kind of build, the results started to pay off last year. So I think the culture in that team is pretty strong. And also I think the disrespect card could easily, easily be played this year because I think you and I, we're going to be higher on, on Missouri than most people. I think Missouri national media is probably going to be picked probably a lot lower. They're going to look at the losses on defense and go they're significant and they are. We'll see who they hire as a coordinator, but also I think there's also 
kind of becoming a trust factor for me for for Drinkowitz and the staff to go out and find the guys, whether it's transfer or recruiting, to go and fill those voids in. So I've got a lot more confidence in uh, in uh, Missouri probably than most people will come uh, preseason prediction time. Mm-hmm. All right, how about uh, South Carolina, Stephen? This will be an interesting season for Shane Beamer and company. Let's run down the schedule here. Old Dominion at home. Great uh, opening game here to get a win here. At Kentucky, we talked about that when we went down Kentucky's breakdown, but that'll be a critical game for, for both these programs. Uh, at home, LSU, Akron at home, Ole Miss at home. Real opportunity there, Stephen, right out the gate, if they could pull an upset or two to to ha- to be, who knows, 4-1, and one, maybe even 5-0. and oh. I mean, if, if everything breaks right. But th- that'll be paramount because they got at, at Alabama after that, uh, at Oklahoma, Texas A&M at home, which, which has owned the series. They've only lost once to the Gamecocks as SEC opponent. Uh, Vanderbilt on the road, even though, again, I say Vanderbilt on the road, I say this every time, but it's really a home game. Missouri at home, Woford, that cute little doggy there they got uh, at home, and then Clemson on the road to wrap up the season here. The, the My projected over w- uh, win total for the Gamecock, Stephen, five and a half. W- would you go over or under that number? I would probably go, man, this one's tough. I would probably go over. I think they can probably find a way to get to six. Um, I think there are a couple things that stand out when I first looked at their schedule, which is kind of the opportunity early on. Like you mentioned, you get Kentucky, which is probably a swing game. It is in Lexington. LSU, although I'm kind of high on them, you know, they have to go, you know, come to Columbia. That could be an interesting game. But I think at the early part of the season for South Carolina, it's almost like just trying to navigate this the schedule because like right. you get Alabama and Oklahoma just before you get to the midway point of the season. Now, the second half of the season, there are some opportunities there. You know, I think they could go beat Clemson like they did two years ago. You get Missouri and AM come into your place. Very, very difficult schedule still. I got, I've got them playing six top 25 teams right now. I'm going to bank on the portal additions plus uh, Lenora Sellers selling in at quarterback and South Carolina finding a way to get back into a bowl game this year. You hear that, Gabecock? Steven is back on the Sellers bandwagon, right. baby. So, <laughs> that, that, hey, if nothing else, take, take that from this show. Steven's back on the bandwagon. Hey, I saw another – SEC quarterback ranking or two that had sellers like 14 or 15. So Steven's a lot higher on him. I, than I, that. I, 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 try, I tried to send the send South Carolina fans somewhere else for the, like, the comment section. <laughs> All right. How about Tennessee, Steven? We go down their schedule. Chattanooga at home. Come on, Nico. Score 20 touchdowns in that game. Uh, NC State in Charlotte. Those are a tricky game here. They've got to win this if they're going to have a great season on Rocky Top. And that usually means heartbreak <laughs> instead. <laughs> That's trust me as a Tennessee guy. Kent State at home, Oklahoma all the road. First SEC game. Josh Heupel's return to Norman. That's going to be fantastic. At Arkansas, Florida at home, Bama at home, Kentucky at home. Three critical rivalry games there. Mississippi State at home, at Georgia, UTEP at home. And then Vanderbilt on the road. This will be an interesting one, Stephen. I, I got the over-under for Tennessee, eight and a half. Would you go over or under that? I'm going over. Um, I think, first of all, their schedule is pretty favorable. I think if you're a Tennessee fan, you're looking at this going, Alabama comes to Knoxville in Kalen DeBoer's first season. You also get Florida at home. Oklahoma, of course, is on the road. I mean, I honestly, I mean, I'll throw this out there. Is Tennessee how many games could Tennessee be an underdog in for sure outside of the Georgia game? Um hmm, for sure. Yeah. Maybe Alabama if DeBoer is awesome right out the gate. But even that, again, we're we're having to throw a caveat to it. Uh on the road at Oklahoma. Possibly, I could I could see that, uh, but really, I mean, I'm I'm tr- I'm I'm struggling to find more than any any other than the Georgia game. Yeah, I, I, that's why I think ten and two could be very very 
realistic for this Tennessee team. Um, there are some toss up games in there. Like you mentioned the Oklahoma game, certainly, uh, the Florida series, uh, we know what could happen in that one. Um, Alabama kind of more wait and see at this point to see kind of how good they're going to be. But, you know, I also throw, I think NC state in the second week of the season and Charlotte, I've got them as a top 25 team before we get into spring practice. So that could also be a little bit of a tricky game for Tennessee. But a lot of this is, I like Tennessee's got a favor. I think Tennessee's got a favorable schedule plus Nico plus getting heard uh, to start at one of the tackle positions for, uh, for the volunteer. So I, I feel pretty good about where Tennessee is going into spring ball. Yeah. I probably set that over under a little low, Steve, because I've, <laughs> I'm trying to to pump the brakes on the expert. <laughs> Tennessee does not do well with expectations. So maybe a little bias there from, from myself. But uh, all right, how about Texas, Steven? This, man, I can't believe they're in the SEC. This is going to be so much fun. Colorado State to open the season at home at Michigan, who now we get, we know for sure they got a new head coach. So uh, they are defending national champions, but th- this could be a prove it game or, or at least a showcase game for Texas on the road. Uh, who, who's this? UTSA at, at home, ULM at home, Mississippi State at home, Oklahoma in uh, neutral field, of course, Georgia at home, at Vanderbilt again. It's going to be Longhorn crazy up there. Florida at home, at Arkansas, Kentucky at home, and Texas A&M on the road to wrap up their first SEC season. I got the over under for the Texas Longhorns, Stephen. Ten. Would you would you go over under that number? I would take the over. Uh, I guess I'm being optim, super optimistic tonight on all these win totals. So I hope <laughs> I, I apologize there. But I think the if I had to, I guess first of all, I'll start with the Michigan game. Way more winnable than it was if all those Michigan players came back this year. Uh, they're going to be in significant turnover. They have a new head coach. It's the second week of the season. Going up to Ann Arbor is going to be difficult, but that's probably the best time to catch them if you're uh, Texas. Um, the Georgia game, I think, is probably the only one I would for sure say they're going to be an underdog in, and they get them in Austin. Uh, there are, you know, the, the game against AM is going to be awesome at the end of the season, but I just look at this team from a trajectory standpoint five to eight to college football playoff the win total has been increasing the talent level the base of the roster everything sarkeesian's done a great job there they filled in the receiver question mark that we had in the portal bringing in three outstanding players so i think this texas team uh we just mentioned a team in old miss that could have trouble meeting expectations texas has been there before i would be surprised though if they stumbled and missed the playoff next year so i'm pretty optimistic about uh, this Texas team. And uh, I apologize if I've asked you this before, Stephen. I, I mean, this is like the most popular question in the in the SEC right now. And I, I know I've asked it to a couple people already, but if there is a program that is poised to benefit the most from Nick Saban retiring, I, I think a lot of people are looking at Georgia, which I don't, I don't get other other than Nick Saban own Georgia for the most part. So I, I guess I kind of get that. But what I, I guess what I'm really trying to ask, Stephen, because Georgia's just w- recently won two national championships, so it's not, there's not much standing in their way. I guess what I'm really asking you is, who, who's more likely to win an, an SEC, a national championship, if Alabama takes a step back? So, so which program? do you think uh is poised to to step up in, in Alabama's absence if it's if 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 we're already admitting that Georgia's already there I, next year i think it's texas because mm-hmm. i have in my early rankings i had um georgia 1 and then i think you get into ohio state oregon texas uh for the second spot so i, I think texas is is right there to be a national championship contender. I think long term, I think it is that second tier of the SEC. I would say not I don't, maybe second tier is a bad word for it, but it, it's it's Texas, it's Tennessee, it's LSU. It's kind of like those, like not going against Nick Saban. Uh, I guess unless Kalen DeBoer becomes like the second coming of, of Nick Saban, uh, <laughs> Alabama is probably going to be a little bit more vulnerable in the future. So, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought you'd say that. That's why I asked you. But uh, all right, how about uh, Texas A&M, Stephen? We got a uh, very interesting slate here. Mike Elko's debut, Notre Dame at home to open the season. That, that's going to be a fascinating matchup. We'll, we'll learn a lot about the Aggies right out the gate. Uh, who's this? McNeese at home 
So it should be an easy bounce back. Uh, at Florida, Bowling Green at home, Arkansas in Arlington, of course, Missouri at home, Mississippi State on the road, LSU at home, South Carolina on the road, New Mexico State at home, Auburn on the road, and then Texas. My favorite game on the SEC schedule next year, Texas at Texas A&M. I'm going over-under, Steve, for the Texas A&M Aggies and Mike Elko's debut, seven. Would you would you lean over or under seven? I am going, I guess Mr. Optimistic has arrived. I'm going over. I mean, the, the first thing that jumps out to me about this schedule is, yes, they do play Texas, they play LSU, and they play Missouri, all teams that I think are going to be either playoff teams or playoff contenders but there's a lot of toss-ups on this schedule that are very winnable and it starts with the opener against notre dame you know that um notre dame is coming in as probably a top 10 team in the preseason there's a chance to get a good win right away mike dimbrock uh former lsu offensive coordinator of course is now the the offensive coordinator at uh, notre dame but florida i think kind of toss-up game you also go down the schedule like you know, at Auburn later in the season, it's kind of a trap game before the Texas game. So I think if the pieces fall into place, we know AM has roster talent. That is not the, the problem. They have a good quarterback in Connor Wigman. Um, the question I think was just maximizing that talent. And I trust Mike Elko and the staff to do a much better job than Jimbo Fisher did. How big will that Notre Dame game be in terms of hitting that over? Like if they lose it, could they still hit it? You think? I think so, but I th- I think that's one they got to have to hit that over. Um, I, th- I also think on the other side of things, I think if you're like if you're an SEC fan, like beating Notre Dame in the season opener ought to be a priority, <laughs> right? I mean, otherwise <laughs> Notre Dame probably wants to come into SEC territory, make a statement, and beat Texas A and M. But you know, if you beat Notre Dame, you get the, they can't beat the SEC. Well, I mean, this is a good opportunity uh, for A and M with them coming to college station. So I like the timing and I also like the opportunity for A and M to get them in the opener in college station where we know it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid and it's going to be the start of Mike Elko's uh, tenure. So it should be a lot of momentum there. Oh yeah. All right. Last one here, Steven Vanderbilt. Whoo. All right. Let's try to be optimistic here, Steven. We got Virginia tech at home. Uh, I don't even know who this, this the, the who are they playing the submarine alcorn state there there you go alcorn <laughs> state week two at home georgia state on the road why why in the world we got an sec team going georgia state should never be on an sec schedule after the they beat tennessee nearly beat auburn they're, they're just a nightmare let's get them off the, the schedule forever uh at missouri alabama at home kentucky on the road we got Ball State and Texas back-to-back home games for Vanderbilt at Auburn, South Carolina at home, at LSU, and then Tennessee at home. Steven, over, under, win total for Clark Lee and company, three and a half. Would you go over or under that? I would probably go under. So I think there are three guaranteed wins on their schedule um alcorn state ball state and also at georgia state although i should say georgia's at georgia state probably won't be uh too easy but i don't know why the scheduling virginia tech sounds good in theory they're going to be much better next season um i'm looking maybe we can we get umass on the schedule too to <laughs> play, you know, <laughs> see how many times we could get umass to the schedule but man i'm looking through the schedule for for vanderbilt and wondering like where are the sec wins going to come from now, I will say on the positive side, I like a lot of things that Vanderbilt has done this offseason. Uh, Diego Pavia, the quarterback from New Mexico State, he was the one who beat Auburn uh, in November of the season. They also brought in Jerry Kill as an off-field assistant. Um, I, I think he's one, of the, he's one of the better group of five coaches in the country. So I like what they're doing. I just wonder if the roster talent is going to be there for them to uh, just kind of find a couple SEC wins. Maybe they can get one, um, which puts them at the over at four. But right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna say three and a half would be kind of my take, and then take the under on that one. Yeah, I mean it was it just foolishly, Stephen. They they basically said we're not getting into the NIL game, and then all their players, key players, left, and they said, "Hey, we found some money in NIL." So I mean. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe they maybe those guys just wanted too much. I don't know, but I, I can't imagine a lot of those Vanderbilt guys commanded huge sums of money. So I, I don't know. It's it's just 
they just find one way to screw up after another and and the latest and and in fairness to them but stuff i'm sure they don't have these boosters that are that are anywhere near the vast majority of these sec programs so that is fair to say as well but uh man they they screwed that up royally royally didn't they i think i would have found ways to keep Jaden mcgowan will shepherd on campus um i think mcgowan transferred to boston college and um shepherd transferred to colorado so Mm-hmm. You know, I, I if I'm Vanderbilt, the number one thing for them is going to be roster retention. When you have guys that are in your program that are already good enough, you've got to find a way to keep them, and they've got to find a way to supplement through the portal. They've been more active in the portal than I thought they would be, but I think to your point, once you start losing guys, you've got to find a way to replace them and get better because otherwise they may have been worse than they were last year because they lost all their quarterbacks they lost their best receivers at least in this case i think they've given themselves they've raised the floor a little bit from where it was a few uh a few months ago at the end of the season uh with all the personnel losses yeah well steven hey i thought this was a successful uh, live edition here with you first time we've gone live so i, I do very much appreciate uh, that and we're going to be doing this every week uh hopefully you know same time slot same day you know things will come up so we may adjust from time to time, but uh, anything before we head out here, Stephen? You know, I think there we're talking about over and unders, and you asked me about the playoff picture, like thinking about like well, how many teams in the SEC could make the playoff, and I would kind of set it maybe at five and a half or so, mm. because that, you have to keep in mind that the, the Pac-12 going away is going to open up another at-large spot that hasn't been official, but it looks like it's going to be five champions seven at large spots so there's another spot for an sec team so i think sec is automatically going to get one from the conference champion and then i think you can easily see four uh at large teams get in there where that's alabama texas tennessee lsu oklahoma uh, missouri Ole miss so there's a lot of contenders but if you're asking me to set some sort of over and under (laughs) right now i'd probably set it at five and a half for sec playoff teams next year and we're gonna get at some point steve we'll 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 get we have to and all four from the SEC. You know it's going to happen it's eventually. Happening. And it, if it happens right out the gate, they may blow it up again and, and <laughs> you know, I make it 16 or something crazy like that because the rest of the country will hate it while I will love it. But uh Hey, yeah. I've, made, I've made the point that I think some of these SEC teams are going to be underseeded in the playoff, and that's going to be bad news for some of these uh teams that are going to be like maybe the big 12 champion that's kind of overranked at three or four just because they're a conference champion. Yeah. I mean, it, it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Um, and, and, and to your point, I know you made this point about a year ago, Stephen, that's just kind of the, uh, the, the way they're doing it with, with the top four automatic and, and it's, you know, that we could get a, a scenario, Stephen, where it's number one, Georgia, number two, Texas. They're clearly the best two teams in the country, but they play in the SEC championship, and then one of them's going to get a bye, and the other one's going to have to go, you know, potentially on the road in an opening round. Like it's, it's screwy the way they've done it, and and I don't think enough people, you know, that's so far out. They haven't thought that ahead, but I know you have. That's, that's gonna, that's gonna be cause for concern as well. Yeah, I think they're looking ahead. I think there are two things about the new playoff that just frustrate the heck out of me, which is number one, the playoff games up until maybe we get to the semifinals, they should be played on campus. Like college football is a like on campus, a stadium environment. It doesn't need to be played at some sterile uh, bowl site for the quarterfinals. It's not fan friendly to ask fans to travel to the conference championship, the first round, the second round to bowl sites. So I, I don't love that at all. Um, I also, I hate the way the, the playoff is seeded. It should just be the 12, um, you know, I'm okay with the conference champion qualifiers being in there, but let's reseed. Like let's seed one through 12, the best teams. It's not fair to, to if Texas is the second best team, they shouldn't fall to five uh, when they might be clearly the second best team just because they're not a conference champion in the toughest conference in college football. So uh, sorry to, to to rant here at the end, but I, I just think it's a stupid, a very stupid, short-sighted uh, decision on their part. Right. Well, hey, rant away, Steven. We got a long time before the college football set. We got to eat up his time somehow. So, hey, before you go, Steven, as always, can you tell the audience how can they follow you and how can they find your work? 
Absolutely. So you can follow me on Twitter at Aflon Steven, and you can check out all my work on YouTube, all CFB 365, also on Instagram at Stephen L CFB. All right. So that's going to do it for Stephen and I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in, especially those on the live show. And we got more content coming your way. So uh, so stay tuned next week. Cousin Shane and I will be back before you know it. I got a, a in-studio guest coming. Probably going to put that out on Saturday night. Very much looking forward to it. So it is the off season, but the content is not going anywhere. So uh, we do appreciate each and every one of you. We'll catch you on the next one.